So Dame Judith Hackett, DBE, Fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering, Fellow of the Institution of Chemical Engineers, another chemist, um, a bit of a theme this evening, and Fellow of the uh, City and Guilds Institute, is a former chair of both the UK Health and Safety Executive and also the Manufacturing Trade Body, Make UK. She graduated in chemical engineering from Imperial College London in 1975 and then joined Exxon Chemicals as a process engineer at the Fawley Refinery in Hampshire. She rose through the technical management to become operational manager of the Bootle Polymer business and also for responsibility for health and safety at an early stage of her career at the Fawley complex. She then joined Harcrow's Chemicals for six years as operational director of the pigments business before being appointed group risk manager for the parent H&C group. Now in 1998, Dame Judith became director of business and responsible care at the Chemical Industries Association and served as director general from 2002 to 2005. She then spent two years in Brussels with the European Chemical Industries Council. In 2007, Dame Judith became chair of the Health and Safety Commission and then chair of the Health and Safety Executive on the 1st of April 2009 when the two bodies merged. I don't know if it was uh, why the, that date was chosen, the 1st of April, but it just seems to be an odd date for merger for me. Um, she then led a period of rationalization and updating of regulations and also critically led media initiatives to make the argument that safe and healthy workplaces are more productive and also achieve better stash, staff retention, something that SIBSI members know all about. In 2016, Dame Judith took over as chair of manufacturing trade body EEF, which is now known as Make UK, and is a role that she held until April 2022. She served as president of the Institution of Chemical Engineers from 2013 to 2014, and is a fellow and trustee of the Royal Academy of Engineering, which is, of course, the UK's National Academy of Engineering. The Dame Judith, of course, became very widely known in the construction sector when she was appointed to lead the independent review of building regulations and fire safety, which, as we all know, was commissioned by the government in the aftermath of the Grenfell Tower tragedy in July 2017. In her final report, Building a Safer Future, it was issued on the 17th of May 2018 and formed the basis for fundamental and systematic reform of building safety legislation, which was introduced through the Fire Safety Act of 2021, the Building Safety Act of 2022, and also, critically, the creation of the Building Safety Regulator to oversee the reformed building control system in England. Now, these legislative changes and the secondary legislation which they enable and which are already being introduced constitute the most radical and fundamental reform of the oversight and regulation of building work in England since the Second World War. The new regime introduces comprehensive, integrated, systemic reform of building regulation, increased accountability for those procuring designing and constructing buildings or undertaking regulated building work. As we all know, the Act establishes the new building safety regulator, creates new and more stringent regime for the regulation of higher risk residential buildings, which critically extends for the first time ever to regulation of, the, of their operation throughout their life. A significant change. Now, Dame Judith has consistently uh, argued for the construction sector to take early action, to respond to the changes, and not to sit back and wait for legislation. And she has championed industry initiatives to develop competence frameworks across the sector, as well as the Building Safety Charter and also the Code for Construction Product Information, to establish clear standards 
for the generation, presentation, and supporting evidence for product information. She's also championed the introduction of digital information management in construction in general, and also the golden thread of information in particular for higher risk buildings. Since the publication of the government response to her review, she has chaired the Industry Safety Steering Group, which acts as a challenge panel for the reform process, which I'm sure you'll all agree is a fantastic initiative. Now, Jane Judith is also actively involved in the International Building Quality Centre, which is based in Canberra, Australia. Now, this centre is a collaboration of international public and private sector professionals with expertise relating to the regulation of the building and construction industry. Now, this citation could go on and on because the, uh, uh, the, um, the achievements and contribution that Dame Judith has made to um, health and safety and well-being has been absolutely phenomenal. And I think you'll all agree that the significance and impact of Dame Judith Hathkitt's work is undeniable. I believe that she is an exemplar in her approach to best practice and is pivotal in driving the urgent cultural change that is needed within the construction industry. It truly has been my great pleasure to be able to deliver this citation, recognizing Dame Judith's significant input to our industry and to delivering a safer built environment for all. Please join me in a round of applause as I invite Dame Judith up to say a few words. So, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I am truly um, humbled by this award. It's an honor and a real privilege. Um, but I also want to thank Sibsi for more than that, because um, you, you as members have been so supportive, and one in particular, Hal, has been so supportive of the work that I've been doing over the last five or six years. And certainly I would echo the, there's no I in team, if it were not for the support that I've received from people like Howell and Peter Capelhorn and Ken Knight and all of the other people in this room, we wouldn't be where we are. I had huge amounts of support in the work that I've done and pulling together this package of change that so desperately needed to be delivered. But where are we now? Well, it feels to me very much that we're coming to the end of the beginning of this journey on building safety. It's a long, long journey, and we have a long way to go. But the next six to 12 months will be truly crucial, in my view. There are a number of really key things going on right now. Isn't it extraordinary that it takes regulation, new regulation, to force the registration and formation of a register of exactly how many high-rise buildings we have in this country? And in the wake of Grenfell, no one knew. But very soon, we will. But that's the start. We then have to assess them. We then have to ensure that the next round of buildings that we do are built to different standards, so there is much, much more to do. I'm hugely proud of the fact that we have got this far, 
that we've set up the building safety regulator, we've set up the construction products regulator. And what I see now coming out of the building safety regulator in particular is the sort of leadership I hoped for and wanted to see in that regulatory body that is setting the standards, setting this pace, setting out a strategic plan for what now needs to happen over the next five years and beyond. I'm also equally pleased, of course, that the government heeded my words in my report where I said, do not cherry pick from these re recommendations. Implement it in full. I honestly think this is one of the first times that we've ever seen government policy embrace true systemic change because that was what was needed and that's what we're going to see. But as Howell alluded to, we still have a long way to go. We still have a lot of parts of this industry who are holding back. They still come up with all sorts of extraordinary reasons why, waiting for detail, waiting for yet more secondary legislation when the answer is, actually, all we need you to do is to do what you always should have been doing. So what's the problem? Which bits of that don't you know? And why don't you know it? But having said that, I'm particularly pleased to see some of the initiatives that have come out of organizations like this one and like CPA and um, the Considerate Constructors Scheme the Building a Safer Future Charter, the, con the Code for Construction Product Information, really, really important supporting initiatives from industry that help to move us in the right direction. But we still have a long way to go to get those uh, laggards to pick up the pace and recognize that change is really coming. The Building Safety Regulator will be fully in operation by April 2024. And I think we're going to see some red faces very quickly when that happens, because the regulator will make an example of some people very quickly to set that standard. So I really do think we've got to keep on with that message about just get on and do all of the things you always should have been doing and remind them of why. Remind them unashamedly of what happened at Grenfell. Because we must never let them forget. I want to say a little bit now about one of the gaps in my report, which may surprise you. When I was asked to do this piece of work, I was very clear that this was a huge task. I had a year to do the task. Secretary of State was very clear he wanted a report within a year, so I was very clear there was a limit to what I could do. So I focused very much on building regulation and fire safety, as he asked me to. But there's a couple of sentences in my report that says there's at least as much work to do on products as there, were, as there was on building safety regulations. That work has yet to be done. Um, I'm very pleased to see that that uh, work was taken up by the uh, team of Paul Morell and Annalise Day, and they have recently had their report published. You heard in my citation that in the, in the meantime, I've been doing quite a lot of work internationally uh, with the IBQC and with colleagues from Australia and the US, we have published a framework which is um, applicable worldwide because it's a framework that says if you want good product regulation, this is what it needs to look like. And it's described in terms of a framework which any nation anywhere in the world can now overlay their own system on and identify the gaps. And very quickly identify where the priorities are to fill those gaps. There's a remarkable consistency between Paul Morell's report and the underlying principles of what we've described in that framework. So it shouldn't be that difficult to decide what the next steps are that we need to take here to close that gap 
that I was very conscious I had to leave in my review, which was the stuff around products. We have to tackle those issues of uncontrolled product substitution, inadequate testing and certification and assurance, poor installation and lack of knowledge of why it's important, and let's be honest, because the Grenfell inquiry laid it bare for us all to see, deceit and misleading information. A shameful catalog of events that led to what happened there. But now we know what's needed and we have to deliver it. And I'm very pleased to be able to tell you that in addition to all of the things that you heard in my citation that I'm involved in, I'm now also on the government's construction products regulatory um, reform panel that is in the process of producing a white paper that will lead to another tranche of reform, this time around products, which will complete the set, in my view, of current issues that we know we've got. But that's not the end of the story, and you know it. There's much more to come, whether it's electric vehicles and electric bikes and electric scooters being stored in people's apartments and underground car parks, whether it's sustainable materials that may be more flammable, whatever those innovations are that are coming, this is a journey and a long one. And we have to recognize not only that we had to make changes based on the mistakes we'd already made, but we have to get smarter at anticipating what is coming and ensuring we have a robust system in place. So thank you again for this uh, honor this evening. Um, it's certainly been a journey of discovery for me having stepped out of the chemical industry and six years ago I knew very little about construction and high rise buildings in particular. Now I do a lot of work here. I'm also doing a lot of work in Australia with the governments there on their reform program. And when I get described as a world expert on building safety, there's something inside of me that goes, not yet, not really, but nonetheless, um, I'm here to stay and I'm gonna see it through. So thank you so much. <laughs>